Well, there seems to be only one way the fighting in Gaza could be shortened, and that's if Israel hunts down the suspected mastermind of the October 7th attacks, Hamas chief Yahya Sinwar. Yes, Israel says Sinwar is pulling the strings of the Hamas terrorist group. He's been nicknamed the Butcher of Khan Yunus and has been described by officials as both a psychopath and the face of evil. He spent more than 22 years in Israeli prison for killing soldiers, but was freed during a hostage deal 12 years ago. Well, since then, he's risen to the top of the ranks of Hamas and has been labeled by the U.S. government as a global terrorist. IDF officials believe he has been coordinating recent hostage releases and other war affairs from the safety of an underground bunker in Gaza. Here's what we know about Sin Warren efforts to find him. Ismail Jaffer is a former White House counsel for President George W. Bush and now serves as the executive director of the National Security Institute at George Mason University's Law School. Welcome back to Morning Rush, Good to have you. So, Thanks for having me. Yeah, Jamil, many are referring to Sinwar as the Osama bin Laden of Gaza. What similarities um, are, are, are we seeing here between the two? Well, you know, he obviously planned a mass casualty attack against Israel, the equivalent on a population adjusted basis of a dozen 9-11s uh, in a single day. Uh, so obviously a very deadly character, uh, capable of, of coordinating large scale plots alongside Mohammed Deef, the uh, commander of the Qasim Brigades uh, who carried out the attacks. And so uh, this is a real challenge for Israel because they've got to identify where he is in Gaza. He's, they, it's, he's believed to be hiding out in Khan Yunus in a bunker below uh, that city, which is a, a populated city down in the south. Uh, this will be a challenge uh, for the Israelis to identify where he is, ultimately go in and get him uh, while still preserving uh, civilian life and, and avoiding civilian casualties. And at the end of the day, getting him obviously would be a huge victory for the Israeli military. But Gaza, uh, uh, Hamas is not just one man and when, when whenever one leader is toppled another emerges that's how this this works uh so what's really achieved besides perhaps a moral and symbolic victory if and it's still a big if they get this guy well i think a couple of things one it's always very helpful to keep the leadership of a terrorist organization on the run uh, the united states did that for the better part of two decades as we fought the war on terror we may be the number three in al-qaeda the military commander the most dangerous place in the world to be, or maybe the most dangerous job in the world. And that made it very hard for all kind of to plan large scale attacks and coordinate a response to the United States. The same is going to be true of Hamas. If you can take out uh, the leadership, whether, whether it's the number two, like Yahya Sinwar, right, the leader of Hamas in Gaza, or his military commander, Mohammed Deef, right, or even uh, the leader of, of Hamas who lives in Qatar, right, Ismail Haniyeh, you can really achieve some success by cutting the head of the snake off. At the end of the day, you're right, though. You've got to take out a significant number of Hamas fighters to have a long-term effect on their capability to operate. What type of intelligence um, is the IDF relying on right now? Because for a long time, they've said there are miles and miles of tunnel system underground, uh, which we have seen video of and, and photos of. But when it comes to someone like this, someone who is trying to stay hidden, what type of intelligence can they rely on um, in, in order to know that he's even there? I mean, you would imagine that if you are the head of this that you wouldn't even be in that space where the fighting is going on so how do they know that he, he's even there that's right so i think they're probably relying on a combination like we did uh, to get osama bin laden a combination of human intelligence assets on the ground to the extent they have them there in southern gaza uh geospatial imagery imagery from overhead uh, to identify where uh, couriers are moving and the like and signals intelligence which for us in getting osama bin laden was critical because we picked that courier up uh, talking to his family, and that's how he ultimately worked back the fact that he was, in fact, near Osama bin Laden. So they're using a combination of these things. Remember, it took us a long time to get Osama bin Laden, almost a dozen years, um, and so it's going to be a tough uh, road to hope for the Israelis. At the same time, there's no question they are very focused on going after uh, this individual, Yahya Sinwar. And one more thing before we let you go. <clears throat> As this war now shifts into southern Gaza, where people... <laughs> went when they started bombing uh, the north here. Um, and considering now there's reports that they may f flood the tunnels and we're hearing about the disease. We all know the civilian death toll is going to increase dramatically. Uh, that <laughs> saying a safe zone in the middle of a war is, mm -hmm. is sounds good, but I, almost it seems <laughs> impractical to say the least because uh, war is hell so there's no safety from hell and you're living in the middle of it in an already densely populated area as those as the death toll and the crisis deepens um, how do you think that continues to shape public opinion of the war and does that shape where this thing goes ultimately 
Well, look, there's no doubt that the Israelis are painfully aware that every single civilian death, every woman, every child that dies in this conflict uh, hurts their ability to prosecute this war effectively against Hamas. So they understand this challenge and are going to try their best to try and keep civilian casualties to a minimum. That's why they're talking about this idea of a safe zone. You're right. It's, it's going to be very hard to create a safe zone within a war zone. Uh, but that is part of the obligation of our party is to create safety for civilians, try to create that safe space, and then go after the adversary. Of course, when you do that, the adversary tries to gravitate to that safe space. And that's one of the challenges with Hamas. Hamas, to the contrary, contrary to the Israelis, actually benefits from a civilian casualty in this conflict because they gain support in public opinion, as you were just describing. And so their incentive is to maximize civilian casualties in such a perverse way. And for the Israelis to minimize civilian casualties, and yet, it, as you point out, there's, there's going to be no avoiding them. So this is going to get, I think, more challenging for everybody. I think public opinion is going to continue to be focused on this area, which will continue to pressure Hamas to increase civilian casualties and the Israelis to try to minimize them. Uh, and uh, how that tightrope gets yeah. walked, I have no idea. <laughs> but that is where we are. Yeah. Uh, Jamil Jaffer, as always, thanks for your time and for your insight. Please, uh, please come back as news warrants, sir. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me.